Welcome to Dangerous Prototypes. I'm Ian. First, I want to give a huge shout out to Microchip. They sent us these two tubes of their new Serial SRAM memory storage chip. It's a chip with just eight pins that can store up to four channels of, of data simultaneously. So we're going to use it in the new Logic Sniffer version too. These are actually, uh, you might call them scratch and dent. Uh, they wrote us and said, do we want two tubes of chips that are marked uh, 23K1024, but the actual final part number is uh, 23LC1024. So they're mismarked. They're still in the LC voltage range, but they're mismarked with the K voltage range instead of the LC. We got two tubes of scratch and dent tips. Pretty cool. But the main thing we're talking about today is the Bus Blaster version 3. And this is the successor to our Bus Blaster version 2.5, which was a very popular design that's been around for about a year now. The Bus Blaster is a JTAG debugger, which means it lets you program and debug various chips that use the JTAG interface. That can be ARM chips, CPLDs, field programmable gate arrays, a whole bunch of different devices. So chips that go in the latest tablets and cell phones and toys and just about everything use the standard JTAG interface. It's got a certain number of wires and it's got a certain set of commands that every chip should respond to, but beyond that is a blank slate. So it's very difficult to reverse engineer a JTAG device. If you don't have the data sheet, if you don't have the boundary scan file that defines the chip, then you're pretty much out of luck. It's very difficult to reverse engineer. So the Bus Blaster is our JTAG debugger. It's completely open source and meant to work with open source software like OpenOCD and URJTAG, which are both the utilities for working with JTAG devices. I'm a huge fan of the Bus Blaster design and I can't take credit for it. It comes from an application note by Texas Instruments that a user contributed to the forum. Many, many JTAG programmers use the same FT2232 USB to JTAG chip. That's the bigger version of the FT232 that's used in the Arduino, in the older Arduinos. It takes a USB signal and inputs it and converts it into two JTAG channels. Not just JTAG, serial, SPI, I squared C, some other stuff, but the most important thing we're after here are these two JTAG channels. Now most manufacturers just use JTAG A, send it through some logic chip to shift the voltages and make it compatible with whatever their device is using, and then output it on a header to whatever the target device is, whether it's an ARM, a CPLD, a field programmable gate array, et cetera, et cetera. Many manufacturers and many programmers use the same chip for its JTAG capabilities, but the only difference is they all use some different combination of logic here, and that has to be accounted for in your software. So what the Texas Instruments reference design did was use a CPLD, a programmable logic chip, instead of discrete logic chips. That means you can program whatever combination of logic into it that you want. We took it one step further, and we used the newest FT2232 USB to JTAG chip, and we tapped that second JTAG channel, and then we used it to program the CPLD, which is also a JTAG device. So now, if you want a different buffer, if you need to imitate a different programmer, all you have to do is upload that over USB, and then suddenly you have a programmer that's compatible with whatever software, whatever buffer that those manufacturers are using. So now I quickly wanted to go over the evolution of the Bus Blaster hardware. This is version 2.5. This is the one we're currently selling now. You can see it's got a header here that connects to the device, and the USB connector is over here on the side. Now let's move on to the first version 3 revision. Here you can see the most significant change is we moved the USB jack to the opposite side of the header. So now it's symmetrical like most devices you'd expect to use. The Best Blaster can power a device at 3.3 volts, or it can take power from a device at a whole range of voltages. But the maximum is 3.3. Version 2.5 didn't have any protection for over voltage, but in version 3 we added a resistor and a zener diode. That way if you attach it to a device that's using more than 3.3 volts, there's some protection for the CPLD. We also added serial resistors to the input and output pins. That reduces noise, but it also provides some protection in case you connect it to a device that's over the recommended voltage. In addition, on the version 3, we've rearranged some of the connections between the FT2232 and the CPLD. There's a possibility this might become a continuous 60 million sample a second logic analyzer. It's going to take some software, but we're nowhere close to doing it, but the hardware might support it. In order to do that, we need to route the clock line from the FT2232 to one of the clock, global clock compatible pins in the CPLD. And with the version 3 design, we swapped a few pins around so we have that connection. 
That makes it potentially more powerful than the version 2.5, but there's absolutely no software support. We're not working on it, and we haven't seen anything like that out there. It's just to sort of put the possibility out there in an open hardware design and see what comes of it. Around the time we did version 3, we moved to our new Sick of Beige standard PCB sizes. These are standard PCB sizes we're using to make our stuff easier to case, but also easier to reuse our case or share cases intended for stuff that we've made. The most significant change of the 3B is the standard size and shape with the nice rounded corners and standard hole placement. But you'll also see that we updated the labeling on the power header and also the labeling along the I.O. pins. And here's an example of the Bus Blaster version 3 in the acrylic case. It's a basic sandwich case. We have two sheets of acrylic and some hex spacers in between. Here it's connected up to our Cool Runner 2 CPLD development board so we can do a demo in a few minutes. This isn't the world's best case, but it provides some form of protection and hopefully keeps it from shorting out on things on your table. And if you check it out, you see that we've got the top sheet cut specifically for the Bus Blaster version 3. But then for the bottom sheet, rather than ordering a separate blank sheet of acrylic cut separately and charged separately, we just use the top over again upside down. That saves us buying that blank sheet every time we have a different size. So I want to turn over to the computer and briefly show you the process of uploading a buffer to the Bus Blaster, as well as running the self-test and then trying it out with the device. Right here we have a freshly built Bus Blaster. There's no buffer programmed into the chip yet. So we're going to connect it over USB and program the buffer for the first time. Then we'll run the self-test to make sure everything's working right. First we're going to run URJTAG. This is a special hacked version that lets us talk to the second JTAG interface and program the CPLD. So the first thing we're going to do is connect to the programmer. So we type cable, FT2232 is the type, and since we want to talk to that secondary interface, we're going to say interface equals 1. Now if you wanted to do the normal JTAG interface, you'd say interface equals 0. But since we're using the secondary JTAG channel to program the CPLD on the bus blaster, we use interface number 1. Now we're connected to the programmer. So let's first try just to detect what's connected. Well, there we go. We detected a CPLD, the manufacturer is Xilinx, but we don't know what part it is. So we actually have to specify what's called a BSDL file. I've already got that downloaded and put into a directory. So we'll just say BSDL path, colon, and make sure you do the forward slash because our Windows compile is messed up a bit. And now it'll search there for some BSDL files. We've already put the BSDL file for this chip in place. You can download those from our website too. Now we'll try detect again. This time it found the chip and it identified it as an XC2C32A 44 pin package, which is exactly what we have. Next we want to program with the SVF command. We'll point it at our Bus Buster version 3 buffer. And we want to show the progress as it programs, and we want to stop on any errors. We programmed successfully, it just took a second, and that message, output match expected TDO values, that means everything that came out of the chip was the response we expected. So now we're good to go. Let's run the self-test and see how it works. Next we're going to connect every other pin together, and then play a test pattern out of the FT2232. It'll go into the CPLD, into the header, and then back into the FT2232. And we'll alternate all the pins to make sure that there's no pins stuck together and there's no pins that aren't soldered. The final step is to put a jumper between pin 28 and ground. Now when we plug in the USB, the LED should light up and that'll tell us that it's in test mode. Perfect. Now we'll use our self-test utility and it'll send the pattern through the CPLD and test the return pattern and make sure none of the pins are stuck together. So we'll just run this batch file here. Press a key to start the test. You can see it plays a pattern. It first moves the bit along the pins, and then it plays an alternating pattern. And we get the same output every time. And it tests, and it says there's no errors. So we know this one, good to go. For our final trick, we're going to connect the Bus Blaster up to this little Cool Runner 2 development board that's available for like 15 bucks. And we'll just try to probe the chip and make sure everything works. So we'll connect it up over USB. We'll come back to the URJTAG utility. This time we're going to attach with a different cable, a JTAG key, because that's what the buffer we uploaded emulates. We can say interface equals zero to make sure we connect to the JTAG A interface, but we don't need to. 
we can just say key will JTAG key. It chooses it by default. Now let's go ahead and detect what's connected. This time your JTAG recognizes it. We have the XC2C6444 pin chip. That's exactly what's on this little CPLD development board. So it's detected and working properly. Well, that's a basic overview of the Bus Blaster version 3. It's not a whole lot different than the version 2.5, but it does fit in this sweet case. Next week we'll have live updates from India on the blog all week, and following that we'll have a video from India. The week after that we'll be back to show you the Bus Blaster version 4 hardware design, which is only slightly different and supports one extra feature that's rarely used but some people wanted, so we thought there should be an open hardware design that supports it. Thank you for watching.